Tomorrow, the 15th of February, in Ankara, the HDP and the AK Party are due to publish the guidelines for a framework agreement to take Turkey towards being a democratic republic with a new constitution. The PKK has been consulted and of course is putting in its own contribution. The PKK for a long time was an armed guerrilla group essentially, which is how it ended up on the terrorist list of several European countries and the United States because people in the Kurdistan region of Turkey had given up hope basically that there could be a peaceable solution to overcome the real oppression that they were facing at the hands of the Turkish military. But the PKK is changing its nature as they move from armed struggle to a more negotiated peace, as they hope, where they're talking to the Turkish government uh, directly in some cases and now using other methods such as the petition which has been deposited at the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. Il faut s'habituer à la présence de femmes devant la scène. Et il est probable que ça ne plaît pas certains, mais je pense que ça va aider la démocratisation de notre, nos régions. Donc apparemment les négociations se portent plutôt bien, mais le, le souci c'est qu'on ne sait pas trop comment c'est. Ce n'est pas transparent, donc personne ne sait à quel stade vraiment sont les négociations. Quelles sont les valeurs pour lesquelles vous vous battez Notre identité. Tout d'abord, notre langue, notre culture. Notre leader. Although he is a figurehead, and more than a figurehead in the sense of being seen as an inspiring person, um, and someone who has written at great length about democracy, about his ideas of the future of Kurdistan, nonetheless, he won't be a sort of um, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Turkish president sort of figure who is going to try and impose his view on how Kurdistan develops. So like Nelson Mandela, who gave all South Africans their freedom, so Abdullah Öcalan will ensure that there will be freedom for all the Kurdish people and now is the time.